Yo, 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 what's up, YouTube? Dirty Day and Gaming coming back with another Rise of Kingdoms video. And today, in honor of our KVK1 starting in about almost 24 hours or so, 28 hours, give or take, we are going to be putting together a little bit of a beginner's guide slash list of game mechanics that even maybe some experienced players may not know. So these are tips that are going to help you on the battlefield. They're going to help to optimize your kills and they're going to help you to obtain less severely wounded troops on the field through some nice escape tactics. And there's gonna be a decent amount of lists. This might be a little bit of a longer video, but which of my videos aren't long. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, y'all, so we're going to kind of break this down into a few segments, I think, and, and I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible. Um, so first, what I want to talk about is just movement. So the movement in Rise of Kingdoms is something that is sought after. I mean, this is why a lot of players enjoy the, the aspect of Rise of Kingdoms because it's a mobile game and you have this freedom of movement that I don't think you really get with any other mobile games. Maybe some now, some more now since Rise of Kingdoms has been out for about three years. But when I first started playing Rise of Kingdoms three years back, I was just blown away because there was really nothing like it. And actually, while I was playing three years ago, and I'll give you a quick glimpse of what the movement was like before we had the freedom of movement. So um, again, we're going to talk about a little bit of movement tactics. We're going to talk about some battle tactics on this video as well. Really just trying to help some of the new players in our KVK1 optimize themselves for this KVK and just be as ready as possible. So going into movement tactics. So obviously we all know you can release your troops by clicking on your city or also clicking on an empty spot to bring them out. However, there is a nice little trick that you can do. Let me just get this guy set. Actually, we'll leave that as this. Um, to bring them out just a little bit quicker. So if you go here, it's about one, two, one, two, one, two, boom. And march, new troop, blah, blah, blah. However, if you go onto a node, I think it's a little bit faster to just swing your troops out. And you can put this onto a node you can put this onto a flag, although the flag I think is takes a little bit longer. Um, you can put that onto a city of someone else's. Same thing, same concept as a flag. It's going to take a little bit longer, um, but you can get your your troops out in a hurry, which is really nice. As opposed to this one, two, and then pull, and then one, two, and then pull. So um, just something that I like to do. I really am a little bit of a micro optimizer when it comes to some of these movement mechanics from within rise of kingdoms and that's why i think it's important um, for some players to maybe take advantage of it if they want to just simply get around a little bit faster or again if you are just trying to you know be as efficient on the battlefield as possible so that that is a, a step or topic number one i guess is just kind of quick releases from your city uh like so Okay, so next what I want to go over in terms of movement tactics, okay? So utilize your surroundings, uh, utilize your surrounding environments, okay? So if you are being chased on the field, okay? Say that my Saladin, for example, he is my friendly march and these other marches of mine are enemy marches and I'm trying to get away from them. Instead of just returning back to my city, Okay, you could speed this up a little bit, a little bit more. And this is a very, very basic thing, but I think it's a thing that a lot of players just maybe kind of forget about. So especially with any of the commanders who have the support tree, right? Just as Saladin does. So if we go over to Saladin, why am I talking about support tree in particular? Because of this right here, hasty departure. When troops led by this commander depart from a structure, increase march speed by 60% for the next 10 seconds. Uh, the mobility tree also has this, but you don't really want mobility commanders on the field. So if I'm trying to get away from this little group of commanders that I have here, I can simply, boom, do this. And tile hop, as they call it. Now, when you are doing this, what is also going to happen if there is an enemy march that is chasing you, 
it is going to delay them the slightest bit. So as soon as you hit the node, your enemy, the enemy marches that are on target to you, they are going to pause for a slight second, which is going to give you that little bit of extra space to get away. Now, you can also do this not only just with, um, with resource tiles, but you can also do it with cities. Again, utilize your surroundings. If you are trying to, say, get into the battle faster, utilize this technique. If you are trying to get into, or if you're trying to run away a little bit quicker, use this technique. It is very, very useful. It will save you quite a bunch. So you gotta utilize the surroundings that you have. Use the resource tiles. Use cities to city hop. I'm gonna jump into my buddy Gas's city. Thank you, Gas. And you can see it's very quick. So even if I'm going city hopping, I'm going boom. Thank you, Sandra. Boom. Thank you, turtle. Boom. To a tile. Boom. Now into a flag. So you can see I covered quite a lot of ground there. If you're trying to run away or again, like I said, just kind of get to point A to point B a little bit faster. All right. So next movement tactic that we are going to talk about, and this is, this is straight up from Fleisch. I got this from way back when, when he posted, this is like when Fleisch really started to blow up. I feel like is when he posted this, this video, it was, it was amazing. So I think he called it city ghosting. I usually call it like city phasing. So pretty much what you want to do is if you are next to a city and you can use this in a multiple of ways, which I will go over. If you are trying to get away a little bit quicker, say you want to go onto this area here, as opposed to your troops going around, well, as you can see, one of my troops actually phased, you can actually just slightly right past the city click on where your troops where you want your troops to go and it will phase through cities this is very nice because if you continuously do this as you can see they're going right through the city if you have an enemy chasing you you're going to force them to then go around while you are just phasing through cities in a straight line as opposed to these crooked lines as you can see here, a lot of space, when uh, a lot of time it takes for when these guys are turning. So the city phasing is a really nice thing that I like to do. Also, if you're in KVK, remember, when you're in KVK, your city cannot be attacked when you are on Alliance territory. So if I was off Alliance territory and say my city is surrounded, okay, and I'm trying to maybe get a couple cheeky deaths, right? So let's just... Let's port just for the sake of a little bit more clear um, approach to this. All right, so we go over here. So now my city is off territory. <laughs> I have all my troops out and let's say that these barbs are a bunch of troops that are near my city. Say you're random teleporting, all right, in the beginning of a zone very nice little cheeky tactic which i actually got got caught slipping on um myself at one point where i was just you know the adrenaline's rushing and you want to you want to attack these troops well if you just phase onto a city and you double click them and then as soon as they are on top of your city you could force them to stop in your city so now it becomes a little bit harder oh no don't all come back don't all come back it becomes a little bit harder for the enemy to target you. So there is a chance if they are dragging and dropping that instead of clicking on your troops, as you can see here, just clicked on my city. Instead of clicking on the troops, they are going to just hit the city. And if you have a proper garrison set up, or even if you are just a stronger player with a bunch of troops inside, you're going to get some cheeky kills out of it. So another nice little tactic for phasing through cities. But again, I really kind of like to just take that approach just for getting through a little bit quicker um, if I am trying to run away, okay? So that is our city phasing uh, technique. Shout out to Fleisch, that was so not me. Um, city ghosting, whatever you wanna call it. I like my terminology a little bit better. All right, next that we are going to talk about in terms of movement mechanics and this is probably my favorite one this one is going to i'm going to give the shout out to dragothian is the first time i saw it so next movement mechanic that we're going to talk and probably my favorite out of the movement mechanics that you have within rise of kingdoms and it's not really a mechanic it is 
stated in here in your technologies, guys, in territory. Rapid March 1 increases troops march speed when marching to a target that is in Alliance territory. So you're going to get 7% from Rapid March 1, and then you are also going to get another 15% from Rapid March 2. That's 22% additional march speed. That is crazy good for, and even for a cab main like myself, um, where the troops are just, the marches are a little bit faster. And like, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed if you're, if you're going to attack farm killers and say those farm killers are retreating back to their city and they're just that slightest bit faster and you can't catch them, rapid march is exactly why. However, there is a caveat to rapid march, which I will explain as well. Um, if you are returning to your city, which is on Alliance territory, but first a quick little demonstration um, We'll use just one March just for simplicity. Okay, so just demonstrating how rapid March is going to work So it's going to be a little bit tricky because we're going to be either cutting off um, About like a second or two, but again, I just want to kind of give a little bit of a visual So if we're going on to Alliance territory And we go over to double C you can see it's 36 seconds now if we just move it slightly back off territory 35 seconds so 36 seconds to get over there and then it became 35 seconds to get to a spot that was shorter and you can notice the march speed um the march speed drop and you can notice the march speed pick up as soon as you're putting it onto territory so this is a very nice tactic if you are getting just wrecked on the field this is a really really nice tactic to use to get away i use it all the time i'm even a super super micro optimizer when it comes to this say like if we're killing marauders in home kingdom or even if you're just grinding honor i will use this territory to speed up my marches even if i'm saying uh trying to go let's say if i was over here in this territory and i'm all the way over here with my marches i would zoom out of the map and even if i'm just trying to get like maybe a, a few kilometers over here i would still bring them onto alliance territory that's just me i'm a little bit of a micro optimizer when it comes to that but 20 percent march speed is 22 percent march speed is really nice when you're trying to do that now when it comes to returning back to your city just be aware of where your city is on alliance territory your your entryway for your city when your troops return is always going to be kind of in the front portion of your city so as you can see they are there right now currently should not be getting the boost you can see double c is sitting at 45 seconds now if you put it just slightly past my city and open it up it's 40 seconds now um to to get back to the city so sometimes you don't Hello, Attila. Um, so sometimes you don't even want to uh, return to city if you want to just bring back uh, to the city view and then just click right next to your city so that way you're on Alliance territory and telling you this 22% is huge, guys, especially in KVK when you are getting smashed. If you just really need to get out of there um, to try to avoid that little bit of an extra hospital bill, this is definitely the technique to do so. And again, it's just a nice little trick to do when you're just trying to kill barbs a little bit faster. Um, just get around faster in general. 22% is nothing to sneeze at. It really does significantly, significantly speed up the march speed of your troops. So with that, I think that is pretty much going to wrap up the movement mechanics portion. And now I just want to go a little bit into some, I want to say, I guess, battle tactics. So um, this kind of aligns with movement, but for KVK in particular, this isn't this isn't something that you're going to be able to do in arc. Um, but this is something that you do have to also be be cautious of as players will set traps and flags. OK, so traps and flags is a very very big thing i actually did a little bit of it on stream on my last kvk and uh it worked like a charm i was able to pretty much set a farmer in a node and i baited someone to come and kill my farmer and as soon as they did so let's say this node is over here and this is or say let's say this is the enemy closing in on my node i simply just did this came out of the flag with four troops and just Mash the dude with whatever little barb killing march that he thought that he had available to him 
So hiding in flags is a very nice tactic when you're trying to ambush players, can get you some really nice, easy kills. Um, and also just in general, it can just, it's a nice tactic to just run and hide if you need to, um, and just kind of avoid players. Do note too, if you have flags that are not attached to Alliance territory, I don't think there's an example of any over here. Um, but if you have inactive flags that still belong to your Alliance, you will still be able to hide in those. So that do take note of that as well. You can hide in inactive flags as well. So if your territory and KVK just got sliced and you're kind of just out in the open with your troops and you're getting chased, you can hide them in a flag and then you can kind of just hop through flags to try and make it back a little bit more safely. So that is my little uh, flag ambush tactic. That is something that's very nice that players can use um, to help optimize their kills a little bit more on the battlefield. Next thing that I want to talk about, and we're going to have to go to expedition for this while this video is getting a little long already. So huge topic, I believe, in my opinion, is going to be rage hopping. So what is rage hopping? So we know that rage obviously is the accumulation of your um, little yellow bar, which is going to give you the ability to proc your skills. Now, what we want to do in scenarios like this for rage hopping, <clears throat> and you need a little bit of timing when it comes to it. So let's go ahead and try and pull, actually we don't even have to pull a march. I just hope I don't kill these marches too quickly. Um, but let's go ahead and just start smashing this YSS. We're gonna see our rage bar start to accumulate and pretty much what you're going to want to do is as soon as the primary target that you are attacking is about to die, you are going to want to switch off targets. So what I always like to do is keep my attack uh, pre-selected ready. So as you can see here, he's about to die and now we switch and you can see that the rage it stays on top for some of my marches. I think I may have lost it on a few of them, but this is a very, very nice tactic to keep your skills firing off even if you want to switch off and the march isn't going to die the march will probably die from counter-attack damage anyway now if i just let my marches sit after this troop if i just let my troops sit after this troop dies you can see that all of their rage is going to be gone besides the one that is still being attacked which is going to be attila and um well, actually yeah so okay so there we go so besides the attila um there's a little bit of aoe that's popping up over here which might make it a little bit confusing but you can kind of see how attila is still accumulating rage xy and saladin or not they're just getting hit by aoe now if you go back in and re-engage into the battle now you can see our rage starting to accumulate guys this is huge this is saving you you know five six seconds on rage accumulation if you're just waiting for a target to just die then you're losing out on those valuable seconds to keep your skills chaining. You know, rage hopping, rage chaining, whatever you want to call it, it is a vital, vital little mechanic of the game that I think for players who don't do this, probably if you're struggling to get kills, this is probably why. I think rage hopping is a huge part of this game. If you are not doing this, then you are really hindering yourself on your ability to get kills. So. Boom, really quick and simple little tutorial on rage hopping. If you want to just play that back, you can kind of get a little bit of a better idea. Um, but I think that was the main thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of battle tactics to help optimize your kills. Some other things that you can do to help optimize your kills using uh, your basic army expansions. As you can see, I don't have any of the purple ones. I do need to start stockpiling for the KVKs to come. But again, another one of my friends, shout out to Turtle, trying to help my buddy Turtle just get these kills. And in last KVK zone five, he was like, dude, I just don't feel like I'm getting all these kills. Um, he's really set on getting Attila, but I've been trying to tell him that the Attila meta is going away. The normal attack damage, yes, you're going to be getting some nice easy kills. However, it isn't very much of a benefit to your alliance or kingdom to have an Attila on the field because you're just not killing troops quickly enough. Yes, you are benefiting from the fact that you're pounding their hospital a little bit more. But I think with today's day and age and the, and the current meta of skill damages, I think you are you're if doing about the same, if not probably doing a little bit better now when it comes to skill damage and severely wounded and you're clear, you're helping to clear the field a little bit better. But part of the, the reason too that we found out why he wasn't getting some of those really nice reports he was only using a 25% expansion. 
Now, when you com compare 250,000 troops to 300,000 troops, especially when you are to be targeting your low, um, your low health marches. So you should be targeting. Uh, if we go back in here, we'll jump back in. I guess this is going to be another another quick little tip i mean just target your 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 low health marches all right they're they are going to be the ones that are going to give you the biggest reports because the troop differentials are so much larger so if we were able to pull up reports here then you would see that this yss obviously is going to get wrecked but as there is uh aoe damage coming in on these other marches you can see that i'm slowly trying to target the ones that are going to be a little bit more health also, what you want to do in terms of optimizing battle um, tactics is go for your, your nuking commanders first. So that's why YSS is always to, um, nuked on the field. Uh, Genghis Khan always targeted on the field. That is why I like to personally, I like to hide my super high skill damage marches. So that way they don't get targeted. So nice little kind of uh, nugget for you guys there um, to hide your skill damage commanders you don't really need to do that in the early game for the kvk1 peeps that are going to be watching this video but um, definitely in the late game i mean everyone knows the priority targets as soon as you know you're getting into season of conquest it's going to be the high skill damage commanders you're not really going to see the epifleds walking around the jones walking around which are going to be your high priority targets in kvk1 um, so yeah i mean just be mindful of how you are you pairing up your your commanders um in that sense but you yeah, always want to go after the the weak marches especially when you have those really big troop expansions uh when you're coming out on the field fresh 300k hitting a troop that's say has 350 or 18,000, like this poor little double c over here you're going to be getting those really nice trades and really hurting people on the battlefield um you know cutting their resources drastically. So um, I think that's pretty much it. I have a little bit of a list. I mean, there's some other things that I want to go over, but they really are kind of more alliance-based when it comes to setting up hives. Um, also AOE damage reduction with the one troop, which is a little cheeky. I'm not too much of a fan of that. Buffing, buffing and debuffing rallies, but um, for the peeps in our KVK1, we are going to be going over some of that stuff as well with you guys. Shout out to my man Zephram, who actually um, made a very, very detailed uh, compendium of player slaying, I think as he as he uh, so eloquently called it. So shout out to Zeph, he's putting in mad work for Kingdom 2581. I think that's it. If you, if you guys have any other uh, nice basic mechanics that you wanna list for the channel, please throw them down below. I really like uh, doing this video. It's a little bit different from the videos that I've done in the past. I hope you guys got something out of it. If you haven't done so already, please slap a like on there. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so. Get all the good things working for the YouTube algorithm to help boost the channel. I said this yesterday in my video and I had to cut it out because it was so sloppy. But as always, love you guys so much. Thank you all so much for the support. And I will catch you on the next one. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a good one. Peace.